A PhD student has accidentally uncovered a lost city in Mexico centuries after it disappeared under jungle canopy. Using an advanced laser scanning technology called LIDAR, a team from Chilean University led by Luke Old Thomas mapped an area that had been mostly unexplored for centuries, as tends to happen in Mexico. And Luke Old Thomas joins us now from Arizona. Thank you for your time. Now, can we set the scene? We'll just rewind. You, you were doing a Google deep dive, as you call it. You think... That's kind of cool. What were you looking at and what made you twig that this could be something? Yeah, I was looking at data that had been collected by a team of ecologists in 2013 who were interested in mapping above ground carbon in Mexico's forests. Um, they were basically looking at the trees. What's really distinctive about LIDAR as a technology is that it's essentially a shower of laser range finding measurements that rain down from an airplane. And it allows you to digitally remove the trees and see the ground anywhere that light could penetrate. And so uh, I took this data set that had been uh, collected in order to look at trees, uh, selected all, deleted the trees, and uh, immediately laughed because I realized that I was looking at uh, a really substantial Maya city that was previously unknown to the scientific community. Right, so that hunch really was confirmed then and there then, I guess. What, what did you then do? Um, well, then we started the process of actually formally analyzing it, which means reprocessing the data in order to uh, represent the ground as faithfully as possible, visualizing it in ways that really make small uh, topographic details that probably represent, you know, the remains of collapsed houses, mm. Uh, rooms within larger buildings really scream out and then going through and drawing them all manually in order to develop a data set of ancient buildings whose distribution we could then analyze. And so in this larger area, and it's a data set that consists of a bunch of small blocks and long transects across a large chunk of um, the Mexican state of Campeche, um, we found over 6,000 ancient buildings as, uh, as well as lots of reservoirs, causeways, um, uh, plazas, pyramid complexes, palaces, the, the full spectrum of what you would expect as an expert to find in an ancient Maya city was present in this data set. And none of it was previously known to, uh, to scientists. So what does that tell us about this city and how it functioned? Well, I think the thing that it tells us about this city in particular um, is, uh, is that it was pretty large. Mm. Um, but this city is uh, unexpected, and what that tells us is that cities like this are actually not that uncommon in the Maya region. Uh, the data set that I was analyzing is sort of the, the equivalent of a dart thrown at the map, um, and it hit a city. And uh, what we're beginning to find through analyzing this data set and others like it is that no matter how many darts you throw, a decent number of them are actually going to hit ancient ruins. This was just a thoroughly urbanized part of the world that had lots and lots and lots of people living in it uh, 1,200 years ago. It certainly says something about uh, Mayans building materials and the techniques. Well, yeah, there's uh, there's some of that. More than individual buildings, it's the way that they managed entire landscapes that I think made their civilization so successful. This is a part of the world where metal tools, wheeled vehicles, and beasts of burden were all unavailable. And yet they were able to support really substantial populations um, in the, uh, you know, individual cities with populations in the tens of thousands and a regional population in the millions using uh, landscape management techniques, terracing, uh, uh, you know, ways of retaining soil moisture in the dry season that made this a really, um, a really sustainable and resilient uh, uh, civilization over many centuries of environmental change. So such a, a thriving city. Do we know why it was abandoned? Yeah, the city was abandoned as part of a much larger process um, that we call the Lowland Maya Collapse that unfolded between uh, the mid-700s in some parts of the world and really gathered steam leading up to about um, the 900s AD in most of this region. Um, what basically happened is that uh, a very, very populous landscape, um, a region that was completely full of people and that had political and military conflicts and displacement and, um, you know, complex economic and political integration across a wide area, it was basically operating at um, 
environmental capacity uh, had its environmental parameters shrunk around it by climate change. So um, what was a reasonably um, sustainable level of population that was sustained by a really intensively engineered environment um, rapidly became uh, unpleasant to live in in many parts of the Maya world as climate conditions deteriorated and people basically ended up moving elsewhere. Not all at once, um, but over the course of a century or two, a very large area that had previously been home to millions of people was almost completely abandoned and, um, and indigenous peoples moved elsewhere in the region. And it's important to point out that Maya people in the region today are the direct descendants of the ancient Maya. Uh, the people that built Valeriana, um, their descendants still live in Mexico, Guatemala, and Belize. But the, uh, the distribution of those people changed and basically left a big, um, you know, uninhabited secondary forest in the middle of the peninsula that has been covered in tropical vegetation for a millennium. It's such an extraordinary story. Luke, I hope you're going to be doing some more Google deep dives. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you.